Welcome to DTV, Democratic Television for Democrats, by Democrats, and often about Democrats. My name is Doug Beam. I'm with you this evening with Justin Davis. Justin is the Democratic candidate for the 14th district in the, in the Tennessee House of Representatives, um, and he's running against an incumbent who we all dearly want to defeat. And especially, I think he especially wants to defeat him, but we want to all defeat him. Um, so Justin, this is your second time around. Why don't you give us a sense of uh, one, why you did it again, uh, how it's going this time, uh, some of the impacts of COVID-19 on the campaign and some things like that. And then we'll talk about the campaign and the prop talk about why you want to be in the state uh, legislature. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was kind of uh, not looking to run again. Uh, I'll admit I had a, a a great time in 2018 running for office. It was a fantastic experience, uh, mm -hmm. one that I'll always treasure. I met so many great people along the way. So it was a, a you know, really, really great. Um, but you know, we, I got to looking around and, you know, like I've been telling people, a lot of the issues that we were facing in 2018 were still issues that we're facing today, two years later. And in a lot of cases, some of those things have just gotten worse. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you know, the, the voucher vote came along and my opponent in 2018, Jason Zachary, was the deciding vote. And, you know, and he had initially voted against vouchers. And after a, an unusual break in the voting, he came back and flipped his vote in favor of uh, school vouchers. So, you know, so obviously some shady dealings were going on there. Um, a lot of concerned parents and teachers began contacting me, asking me if I would run again, uh, started considering it. And as I went around to a lot of the district meetings that I frequent, you know, I was kind of being pushed to run and, you know, had to sit down and make that decision and finally came to the realization that we did need to run. We do need to defeat Jason Zachary because he, along with others, Governor Lee, the Tennessee GOP, they're going to continue to attack our public education system. Uh, we're not expanding Medicaid here in Tennessee, which is really crazy to me, especially as we face a pandemic. Uh, there's so many Tennesseans out there who are really struggling and we don't feel like their voice, their voices are being heard. So I decided to step up again and, uh, you know, give this another shot and hopefully we can send Jason Zachary packing for good this time. All right, so that's yeah, that's my. I remember talking about this with you last time, and um, and uh, I'm just wondering if you've if you've um, have you found that because you're in it a second time that there's a certain uh, benefit you got from running the first time, and uh, obviously they knew who you were, or a lot of people knew who you were. So yeah, yeah, and I do think that's the benefit is you know there is some name recognition. Um, so, you know, you're kind of taking a little more serious, uh, this go around, you're, you know, you're not a, a new candidate. Um, so th that was beneficial and it does help. Um, and just having that experience of having run two years ago and kind of knowing what to expect, but also then again, you know, with COVID that's kind of thrown everybody for a loop. And, you know, I've discussed this with uh, other candidates who have run previously and this is very, unusual to have to run in these times but i think everyone's making the best of it and in some ways you know we've we've been very innovative and found uh you know new techniques and hopefully some of those things will help us and other democratic candidates here in tennessee as we um as we um progress let's talk a little bit about how your uh, how this campaign just physically is different from the campaign of 2018 because of COVID-19, the limitations on being with the crowd. Um, how are you, what, what, what works best for you to reach a crowd and, um, and uh, how do you do that? And, and uh, how do you know you're getting there when you, do, when you can't see them in front of you? Right. And it is, it's been really crazy. And, yeah. you know, that was one of the things that I really enjoyed in 2018 about campaigning was, you know, getting out to those meetings and mm -hmm. or canvassing on doors. Mm -hmm. and talking to voters and talking to supporters it was just mm -hmm. a, such a great experience and mm -hmm. i really do miss that this time around mm -hmm. it's difficult i'll admit so 
you know, we've had to shift more toward phone banking as opposed mm -hmm. to knocking on the doors. And we've mm -hmm. been trying to do that. Uh, we've mm -hmm. taken up uh, dropping lit at mailboxes, mm -hmm. new slots and on doors. So, that sure. we, you know, getting the message out there. Right. And, uh, you know, a little more social media, things like that, some advertising. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we've had a really good response and pretty happy with that and looking forward to, uh, you know, seeing how things turn out in November. How do you, um, how about in terms of the number of volunteers? Does, it, does the campaign today require fewer volunteers because you can't do all those extra things? Or does it take more volunteers because every one of them are manual or, or hard to duplicate them uh, or repeated them, I guess is a better way to say it. Yeah, I mean, I think that initially, and especially with uh, COVID, that, you know, there were a lot of people who were hesitant, um, you know, and it, it made it difficult early on, but uh, people have really been stepping up in the last few months and they're making the phone calls and doing the lit drops. Um, and like I said, you know, we've played it safe uh, because of COVID. So, mm -hmm. Uh, but we've got a, an amazing group of volunteers and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of happy to say we've been getting a lot of attention lately uh, and a lot of contacts from people who normally vote for Republican candidates. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of them are kind of fed up with the way things are going, especially mm -hmm. some of the things that are popping up uh, here recently in the news. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really happy about that. I think maybe that's showing that the, the tides are turning here in East Tennessee. So you, you in a, in a fairly red district are seeing, are even seeing that impact. That's really good news. I, my personal opinion is that the, that the interest in the, in the campaign is an interest that's generated. It's, it's a Joe Biden interest. It's not the opponent interest. It, they want not, no part of the other guy is what I, what I think is happening. Mm -hmm. We don't know that till they actually cast that ballot. But you kind of, you kind of reinforced that for me. I appreciate that, you know. Um, how is the, how is the, uh, issue of, how is Zachary's, uh, I guess, selling out to the governor on the, on the voucher system? How is that playing? Now you said teachers came to talk to you about it, but how is that playing? Do you think with voters, do people understand what happened there? And do they understand how, um, it sounds really shady that looked? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's something that we did learn in 2018, you know, kind of going back to one of your earlier questions, that was a lesson that we definitely learned was that a lot of people really don't follow state politics all that closely. So, you know, when you would try and talk to them, they, they didn't know who their state rep was. They didn't know all the sort of shady things that he's been doing for the years. So, mm -hmm. you know, we came out this time around saying we have to educate them about the opponent and uh, you know let them know who the representative really is and the things he's doing or the mm -hmm. things he's not doing for voters mm -hmm. constituents yeah. so you know we we did uh, we've had a lot of support from teachers and parents who you know they do follow this, these issues very closely so we've had a lot of support from them and uh you know it's it's like i said it's been really great to see a lot of republicans who are you know, just kind of fed up with the way things are and they look up the campaign and they, you know, they contact us and say, Hey, you seem like a very reasonable person and someone that we can get behind. Um, so uh, some of it is fueled by his actions and some of it is fueled by just, like I said, you know, we, we get out there, we talk to everyone and we try mm -hmm. and be reasonable. Uh, you know, I'm not representing just the left. I'm going to represent all of uh, Tennessee. All Tennessee. Yeah. Yep. Uh, refresh, refresh our viewers a little bit about what he did in the voucher program. In, in, in the voucher program, I know that it came out to a, a tie vote or something, and, and his vote went from one to the other. So, kind of explain really what happened and what do you think caused that? Yeah, I mean, it was a uh, a very close vote. Uh, he had been telling concerns uh, constituents that you know he didn't think that the voucher system was a good system for Tennessee and he did vote against it um, mm -hmm. there was a break in the vote they came back and he had changed his vote to mm -hmm. vote in favor of vouchers uh, mm -hmm. this has been investigated by the authorities uh, I think the investigation is probably still going on uh, they've been kind of tight-lipped about that obviously but mm -hmm. 
you know, obviously something was going on and we've heard uh, from other representatives who've come out and, you know, said that they were promised certain things in order to flip their vote. So there's no doubt that Jason Zachary also took some sort of bribe here to sell out his vote mm -hmm. and in doing so sold out his constituents. Sure. The, uh, he's been up to some no, no good shenanigans in my view, at least, when it, it, with the uh, Knox County Board of Health. Any connection there, do you think, between what he's doing there and I mean, promises he made there and, and or promises were made to him uh, and the voucher system? Or are those, is he capable of having two or three or four of uh, these little shady things going on at the same time? I mean, it's very likely. Um, you know, I've, I've wondered what his motives here are as far as uh, the Board of Health is concerned. And it's certainly looking like, you know, he is uh, attempting to consolidate power and hand that over to uh, Mayor Jacobs. Mm -hmm. uh, why he's doing that, I don't know. And I, I kind of found it laughable that, uh, you know, he has really kissed up to Mayor Jacobs. And then as soon as Jacob <laughs> caught heat, uh, Jacob sold him down the river and said, hey, he <laughs> has uh, co-wrote this video. So yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, he's been really quiet about co-writing that video. Uh -huh. uh, is really odd for him because he seems to jump at media attention but uh, he's staying pretty quiet wow. now what are some of the issues that your constituents talk to you about beyond the vouchers program um in part i think because they're not getting the service from from jason zachary or from many of the republicans who serve our legislature um their their issues just seem to be so different from what mine are at least what are your constituents saying to you about are there are the important issues for uh, for the next term and for for the state? I think for one, you know, especially now being impacted by COVID is, uh, and this was also a concern two years ago when we ran, but that's healthcare and having access to good quality care. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're spending tons of tax dollars into DC, but that money is not coming back to to work for Tennessee because we right. just simply refuse to expand Medicaid. Right. And I think a lot of that is just due to it being tied to President Obama. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, a lot of Tennesseans are concerned about that. They want to see us expand Medicaid. We've seen the, the results, the positive results of states who have expanded Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's been a big issue. And, uh, you know, of course, things like uh, paid maternity leave, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from employers, uh, equal pay for equal work. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're seeing a lot of issues out there that people are really concerned about. And then, like you said, uh, they're fed up with, you know, government not really working for them. So I think mm -hmm. that we need more accountability in our state government. Mm -hmm. and that's something that I would like to bring once elected. Yeah, the, do, your, do your constituents, um, I mean, when they talk about those issues, particularly Medicaid expansion, do they understand, uh, do you think, fully what, uh, how serious and how stupid the uh, rejection of expansion was for the state and for just everybody, basically? I think that a lot of voters have, um, especially those paying attention. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're the adamant that they want expansion. And we've seen so many of our rural hospitals close. And you know, I always make the point that if, you're, if you live in one of those areas and you have a heart attack or a stroke, you know, not having access to that hospital that's now closed. I mean, that's a matter of life and death. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really key that we expand Medicaid, reopen those hospitals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, open up some more uh, mental health facilities because right. that's been a big issue on voters' minds that we're not uh, really taking care of that. And, you know, that we've been facing an opioid crisis. And mm -hmm. so, we, uh, you know, invest in prevention and recovery. So it's, it's really imperative right now that we expand Medicaid, and especially, like I said, as we continue to face this pandemic. Who um, uh, are, are your constituents, uh, do you, many of them are aware of the fact that the ACA is going to be uh, argued in front of the Supreme Court a few days after the election, and there are now enough justices on the Supreme Court who would, could likely vote it out of out of existence, uh, do your constituents understand the seriousness of that, or how the ACA impacts on their medical care now that's been in place for eight or ten years? You know, so 
Yeah. And I, you know, I was talking with some people the other day and I think that we do kind of take that for granted now, you know, mm -hmm. being able to cover your kids while they're in college and mm -hmm. uh, you know, the issues with pre uh, pre existing conditions. conditions. So I think that, yeah, as you said, since it's been in place for so long, a lot of people are really taking that for granted and uh, you know, it'd be a shame for them to lose it. And mm -hmm. I think that it's really important that we, uh, you know, resist Trump's pick for the Supreme Court. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it's not something that I can do, but no. I do encourage everyone to get out and, and vote because, you know, we need to elect a president who will be picking wise justices uh, yeah. in the future. So right. it's really dangerous what we're facing right now with a uh, possible very conservative court and all the things that they could begin to roll back that right. Americans have kind of taken for granted because we've right. had them come for so long. And so, uh, uh, six to three a conservative majority and some very young justices on there as well so that could go on for a long time plus less conservatives in the um, you know the federal court system the uh do uh, do, do you think that the um that the, that your constituents understand the impact that the supreme court beyond the aca has on their lives i mean there are uh, ruth bader ginsburg drew a lot of attention when she died because people felt that she was important to their life, do your constituents feel that way? Do you think, or is that is that kind of a East Coast thing? I mean, I I feel like most people are paying attention to this issue. You mm -hmm. know, as you said, uh, Ginsburg was such a, a huge influence mm -hmm. on our our courts and on our lives, and uh, you know, a real uh, warrior for social justice. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it, like I said, it's it's a really scary time to think that uh, someone like that who is really fighting for the people could be replaced by, you know, a real right wing conservative. Um, mm -hmm. And we can begin to see things like Roe v. Wade pushed back. Mm -hmm. it, it's really uh, kind of dangerous times that we're facing right now. And this mm -hmm. is going to be a really, really important election. Uh, so I, I do think that people are beginning to really pay attention to these issues and we're definitely out there as a campaign trying to inform voters uh, of the importance of these issues that we're facing. Right. Do you have a Facebook page? Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of funny because I changed it after the 2018 election and they won't <laughs> let me change it back. But back uh, on, no kidding. <laughs> so now it's just called uh, Justin Davis Politics. Uh, so okay. We have a Facebook page. Just David Politics. Um, do you have a Twitter account or one of those? Uh, one of the Instagram accounts? Yeah, we yeah we've got Twitter, and that's uh, J Davis uh, Knox fourteen. And of course, mm -hmm. people can always contact us at the you know through the website at votejustindavis.com. Yeah, that's good. Uh, your your websites are pretty important, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, when we we started putting these shows up on our website as well or up on our Facebook page. And, you know, we would have, you know, a few dozen viewers. As soon as we went up on those, those pages, those, the viewers went up and potential viewers on one of our pages is like 6,500 people. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's big, you know, in spreading the word. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, it really, it, 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 and, and they're, they're, they're pretty effective. I mean, you can talk on them and you can, you can do that kind of, those kind of things. Um, how about money? Are you raising any money? Yeah, um, you know, I was kind of uh, concerned. Uh, we we started off doing pretty well, and then uh, as COVID hit, you know, uh, especially with people concerned about their jobs, you know, things kind of dipped. Uh, mm -hmm. and so we kind of hit a slump there, and you know, I was I was dealing with a lot of things too here personally. So uh, that kind of took a hit, but I mean, things have really picked up, uh, especially recently. And as I said, kind of a uh, happy to be getting a lot of Republican donors. So yeah. it's been really nice to, uh, you know, we've, we've had a, some, several uh, larger donations and tons and tons of smaller donations, which is always great. That's good. Uh, the, uh, presumably, um, uh, you're also getting then volunteers, people who are willing to, they're willing to put their money up, they're willing to probably put some of their time up as well. Huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. We've, uh, um, probably going to leave here and uh, run a couple of turfs over to some brand new volunteers who want to go out and drop lit. Uh, Very good. Yeah. Home bank. And 
actually run into a really nice problem of we've run out of yard signs and we didn't get, we've not gotten them in quick enough. So those things are flying uh, right out of the box and into yards, and that's a really good problem to have. All right. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. The uh, uh, if you run if you run out of litter, you can always get more of that. But when you when you don't have enough volunteers, those are hard to create. That's, <laughs> right. that's for sure. Are there any other things that you want to talk about in terms of your policy, your your uh, philosophy, uh, what you would do as a legislator? And we've got about uh, five minutes to go, so let's uh, give you a chance to cover some of that stuff. Well, you know, it's uh, like I've been telling a lot of people, you know, and especially when I, I do talk to those Republican voters, I keep saying, you know, just give me a chance. Uh, if you don't like what, the job that I'm doing, you can always vote me out in two years. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, I've caught a little heat before for saying that I talk to everyone. I'm talking to, you know, liberal voters, conservative voters. Mm -hmm. uh, we're out there to represent all of Tennessee. Uh, you know, really fight for District 14. My door is always open, unlike my opponent. I want to hear what you've got to say. Looking forward to representing the good people here mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, bring about some positive change to this district. Yeah, that's, well, that's good to hear. I, and it's good to hear that you're out there. I would guess that, um, that having run one time before, you learn how, you learn how to make all the mistakes the first time around. So you make fewer of them this time and therefore you can do more things that are actually working for your, your election, you know. Right. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you feel you're getting, and this is maybe a little close to something I shouldn't talk about on the other hand, are you getting support from the party the way that you feel you need to get, or what other things could, could we do from the Knox County Democratic Party's perspective? You know, I've been uh, very happy with the way things have been going, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, of course, we've got we had a different chair initially starting out with uh, Kenya coming coming on board, and she was doing an excellent job. And then, mm -hmm. you know, she stepped aside. And I'll tell you, Matt and his team, you know, they they're doing great. Jack and Uriah are fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been out doing a lot of hard work, coming up with a a lot of ways to help candidates. Uh, you know, me and others. I think they're doing a really terrific job, and super proud of them. And you know, hope that all of them are going to stick around and be uh, fighting for our Democratic candidates here in Knox County for a long time. They they really are doing excellent. Yeah, besides the energy that they have, they're bright young men and women. Mm -hmm. They there, really are. There, there's a there's a pretty good intellectual uh, heft there in, the, in what they what they what they bring to the party and what they bring to the game and what they bring to every campaign. I'm sure. I mean, I, um, you know, it, it's hard for us old guys to kind of give up the uh, mantle to you know, kids who are grandchildren's age. On the other hand, when you really stop and look at it objectively, that's really nice to see that, that, that youthfulness and the youthful exuberance and the intellectual capacity that they have. I mean, they're, they're, they're thinking about those issues day in and day out, I think, and, and I really do a good job on that. Um, any uh, any uh, regrets you that now we're this part of the campaign? We're down to the last few weeks, like 30 days or something like that. Uh, any regrets of things you might have done differently if you could have? And then also we'll talk a little bit about how you want people to vote. Not for you, but how you want them to physically vote. So. I mean, no real regrets on our end other than just, you know, like I said before, uh, really hate that COVID uh, yeah, as far as, you know, it's really impacted my campaign along with many others and mm -hmm. made it kind of difficult and, uh, you know, not the usual game plan. This, as I told people, it's not the race that I expected to run. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, we've dealt with it uh, and kind of made the best of it. So mm -hmm. uh, I would love to be out there knocking on doors and attending events and mm -hmm. doing those sort of things. But, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is and we've all got to deal with it. And, uh, just trying to to get through, um, but you know, feeling pretty good about the way things are looking right now. Now it comes down to actually casting your ballot because that we've got to do it. That starts pretty pretty quickly for us, actually. Uh, any advice? Any suggestion? What are you guys saying when people ask you about that? Uh, you know, just encouraging everyone to vote uh, and do what they feel is best for them as mm -hmm. far as you know, the the mail in ballots. Uh, I personally. 
am going to be sure that I vote. I always vote early, but uh, mm. I want to be there at the ballot. Uh, mm. We've seen uh, what Donald Trump and his cronies are attempting to do and trying to rig the elections. So uh, I don't want to chance that, but I do encourage people to do what they feel is best for them. And uh, I'm very hopeful for Democrats across the board uh, here coming up in November. Uh, we may not get the results uh, in the presidential race right away, but uh, you know, I, 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 I'm feeling positive for all of us. I think that uh, some change is coming uh, all across the country and hopefully here in East Tennessee as well. Uh, I, think, I, think we, I think we are. This could be a wave election. I, did, uh, I read something today that um, Georgiana Vines received her real ballot in the mail today, and she said she mailed in her... Uh, I understood what she said. She mailed it her, uh, uh, what do you call it, the application a couple of days ago. So it, and and then it, it took a day from the time it was mailed at the at the uh, election commission till it got here. So uh, there's that there's that hope too that that that's working pretty good. Anyway, Justin, we're glad you're running for this seat again. Appreciate you representing us and uh, wish you the best. Um, and we'll uh, we'll say to our viewers, uh, take take Justin's advice. Get out there and make sure your vote. It's a little late to register now, but make sure that you uh, you cast your ballot and you cast your ballot in the way you feel safest. If you do it early, that's great. If you do it on the election day, that's great. But you can also do it if you're going to mail it, mail it in early and make sure that uh, it's got plenty of time to get to where it, where it needs to go. And uh, we look forward to seeing, to our audience, we look forward to seeing you next week with another great uh, candidate and another great interview. And we appreciate you listening to DTV. Thank you and good night.